Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! the bourbon daily the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week today we are mailing it again we are mailing it in (laughs) for the second sunday and the first sunday in april (laughs) 2004 my name is nick do please join me welcoming my co-host steve akeley along with our special guests tim swaya tim faza and kathy cool hey gang what's up how are we doing? Oh, good, good. So shit, we're going to get to this. Uh, yeah, I don't this, even know what show I'm on. Show we don't know. We don't know. What's so, going on? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about what a mess this is, putting it together. Again, sometimes I'm texting things, and I'm not at my computer. I, I, everything runs through my laptop. And sometimes I'm not at my laptop. I'm at my phone, and I'm reaching out to people. Can you be on the show? And matter of fact, I booked show 2000 twice. I, I actually had the show notes sent out to two different groups. And we had already recorded. I'm like, wait a second. This sounds familiar as we're getting ready for this one. And so then we made it, uh, mailing it in for Sunday, April 3rd, which is, there's nothing, there's no reason why we would mail the show in. Uh, and Kathy had prepared for show 2000 because she, she was sent out notes to, to be on. Uh, so it's a, it's a mess. We'll talk about that after the break for right now. Kathy had this, so there's something she wanted to talk about, uh, that, uh, had nothing to do with any of this. So nothing what do we do with Kathy? any of it? Um, so you get to have one food for the rest of your life. You can cook it as many ways as you want. Okay. But you can never eat anything else. Okay. Pizza. Boom. There you go. I'm done. That's it. I'll take pizza. And uh, yes, it's, it's, it represents all food groups. It's got dairy. It's got meat. It's got uh, vegetables. Uh, that, that's that's to, as close to perfection as I can get with one single food. I could cook it different ways, thin style, thick. Uh, medium, I could do French bread pizzas. I could do on egg muff- egg McMuffin pizzas. Uh, I, I got to do a lot of different the breakfast pizza. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you could do with a pizza. So that's going to be it for me. Tim, what about you? Laughing here. I'm waiting for you to say St. Louis pizza. So Saint basically pizza. Rich, it's delicious. It's rich delicious. crackers and cheese whiz. And that's so right. it's the-, well, the Chicago guy says this. Like, Chicago pizza is the worst. Oh. Seriously, and the guy, pizza's and the guy cheese pie. Come on now, oh, we all know it's gosh, deep dishes it's cheese pie. It's no, terrible. it's it's all in the thin crust in Chicago. It's nobody nobody talks about it, but we all admit it if you live here. Uh, yeah. See, how you picked a good one, Steve. Pizza's pizza is so versatile; you can right, do whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Um, God, you know, I mean, if there's only one food, your party wants to go, it. just really just to really piss off Mandy Kaplan and say cheese, but uh, <laughs> but no. Because cheese can be on everything. You can put cheese right. on anything. You can make it with anything. And that kind of is a versatile thing, too, as well. Um, but I, I got to tell you, I love my breakfast. I think the world's problems can be solved with breakfast foods. And that give me eggs. too big of a gr- Okay. Oh, you, you, and give okay. me eggs. And I, nice. could take, I can make anything with eggs across the board. That gets me into everything. Okay. Pasta, pizza, everything. You can use that with everything. Give me eggs. Eggs. Hmm. I don't know about this, but okay. Yeah, I know. I'm it. reaching. We, yeah, you're reaching. Yeah, I, I, oh, interesting. All right, Jim, what, what are your thoughts? You only can eat one thing, and you get, but you know, that's it. So, Steve and I align on a lot of things. And again, like pizza to me, that's the first thing I, I didn't, re- I was muted on my microphone, so I didn't know. It. I shout out pizza, like, because I can do a white pizza, barbecue pizza, oh, I can yeah, do a stick crust. I can do a breakfast pizza, like, I can do pizzas. You could fold it in half and make it like a calzone. Calzo, you know, it's a pizza. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can, 
that would by far, you know, I've had a, a Buffalo wing pizza, whatever. So Ooh, that's good. I like that. So I, I can, uh, that would get me through life if I could do that. Cause there's more variety within yeah. pizza than, than about anything else. Yeah. McNew and I were talking the other day on a different show about the breakfast pizza, like Casey's and stuff like that, but just oh. breakfast pizza is good. If, if yeah. you ever had pizza with an egg on it and breakfast sausage, that's yeah. fantastic. It's, it's a weird, it's, it's by so far the best gas station pizza. Damn good. Oh, yeah. So yeah. damn good. That's good. That's good. Uh, McNew, how about you? What would be, if you could only eat one food, what would it be? But I can cook it multiple ways. Different ways. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go chicken because it's a good protein. And I can do chicken. I thought you hated myself. chicken. I you don't even, chicken. you can't even touch it. You have to get tongs out because you're so freaked out by it. Know, but I like to eat it. I don't like to cook it. I like to eat it. So you can do chicken marsala. You can do fried chicken. You can do. Okay. Cut it up and do like a chicken She's salad. not wrong. I'm no. going to do yeah. chicken. Good. Chicken is versatile if you don't poison yourself with it. <laughs> so just don't make chicken sushi and I think you'll be fine. Yeah. It make me, I'm not like, I have no, I have no phobias. I'm not scared of anything. I hate chicken juice. Like the when you get the package of that shit in the ball right there. Oh, that is why I'm like I don't want to touch. It's so nasty. What if I paid you thirty dollars to do a shooter of that chicken juice, Jim? Would you? Fuck no, you're getting some thirty bucks. Thirty dollars. Hello, free thirty bucks. I do a thirty dollars. Thirty bucks. That's like a quarter tick of gas. Thirty dollars like a good spring cleaning. I think we can all use that. I mean, you can buy you can buy a bottle of Knob Creek with thirty dollars. That's fine. But hello, free bottle of Knob Creek, Jim. It's like three weeks of thirty dollars. You spend it however you want. I'm not even going to judge you. You spend it however you want. Steve, you give me a a steak. You take the blood out of a steak and ask me to do a shot of that. Okay, I'm fine. Chicken yeah. juice. We want yeah. you to do the chicken yeah. juice. The chicken juice. Yeah. If you get chicken juice on your counter, you really have to like disinfect your whole. Oh, you get the bleach out. Get the bleach out. You're fine. Yeah. No, yeah. but like, but I, like kind of grosses really me out. Chicken. I don't like cooking chicken, but it's versatile. Yeah. I want to go with chicken though. You know what I use in the uh, kitchen these days is uh, Everclear in a spray bottle because Everclear <laughs> is obviously <laughs> something that is not poisonous. Uh, right. You can drink it. I, I mean, I made it through uh, college. I made it through college, so I can prove Do you a can gas drink that stove because it's flammable. Oh yeah, it's flammable. It, but it'll it's kill anything. Uh, nothing survives Everclear but us humans. That's it. Anything else dies if you touch it with Everclear. Yeah. I wonder if you could kill a roach with Everclear. Oh it's yes. Oh heck yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You shoot. You shoot the. You get that spray bottle. You see a roach. Hit it with the Everclear. I guarantee you that thing's dead. They can't Why survive. Why right? I see roaches? Why is that a problem for you? More. I don't have roaches, but uh, yeah, I did. Uh, and roaches <laughs> don't die. Yeah, roaches they don't, don't die. die. Yeah, yeah. No. You're going to survive yeah. the well, nuclear, survive Holocaust. nuclear blast. Yeah. yeah. I was opening up a package today uh, from the mail and I cut my hand with a, uh, with a razor blade. I got the Everclear out. I just sprayed it on there. It was painful. And I was right. like, but that, that pain is good because it's, it's killing bad it's stuff. Done. Yeah. 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 Sterilized. Yeah. Look at me now. I'm fine. I'm fine. That's I'm not sick or anything. I'm good. There, there is no infection in your brain. There's no infection. Look at that. Yeah, you can barely even tell where it happened. Yeah, there's, there's a cut. So, you can barely even tell. You can barely I, even tell. I got oh, there it is. Yeah. Hey, see, there's no red marks. There's no infection around there, is there, Tim? Verify that for the audience. Nope. 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 It looks like yeah, I think it's without infection. Right now. Infection there. It's like without infection. Part. Yeah. No. So you think you know how to use a razor knife by now? You would think, but yeah, it just, just I, I was being too aggressive. So yeah, it just flew <laughs> I was there. real excited yeah. to open the package. It was so <laughs> sharp. It was so sharp. It just cut through <laughs> like butter. I was expecting to be a little, you know, be, be a little harder to use. And it just yeah. cut through there. And it was, and then it was out of there. And then, then the reds were just flying through the air and it found my hand. Yeah. So yeah. I, I got convinced last year that I didn't get sick when everyone around me was getting sick because I'm always barefoot. Like I will walk outside in the dead of winter barefoot to get the mail. Cause I think it's good to like touch the ground with your feet. And I'm like, I drink a lot. I'm like, I drink a lot and I'm always barefoot. My immune system is top notch. I'm jealous of you. But I'm like, I didn't get sick. You fucking got sick. I'm jealous of you because I want to go barefoot places, but I'm telling you what, if I walked up to my mailbox, I'd find the only stone on the driveway. And and, 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 yeah, it it just, it's, it's, it's painful. I can't take gumball that, tree that second sucks yeah, you one of those. I'd find one it. of those. I don't even have a gumball tree. One would be in my yard. I'd step no, on you it. just you just hop over it. It's fine. I sometimes yeah. I step on a rock or something. It's not great, but I don't get it. It's good, it's good for your body to be barefoot sometimes. Probably. And probably. My husband thinks I'm insane and it's okay. And I'm like, Kathy, more than me. Kathy asked the question. So I what's do. your answer? So I um I'm torn between two things. Um but it's it really one. Depends. You said one. You said one. Your own rule. 
my own rule. So I will eliminate potatoes and land on cheese. Cheese. Okay. Cheese. cheese. So yeah. I feel like potatoes was the better answer because you can still poop when you eat potatoes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, 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 I really saying if I drink a barrel-aged <laughs> seltzer with my cheese, I'll still be able to poop. So okay. I'm okay. <laughs> You'd still be regular. You'd still be regular. Yeah, I didn't think we'd go there. I mean, That's cheese for breakfast, lunch, wow. and dinner. It's, be, it's important to think yeah. about when you're thinking about. I would about think it'd be tough. World. Can I still poop? You yeah. still want to poop? Oh. <laughs> I think Jim and I got it right with the pizza, actually. I, agree. I think you nailed it with think pizza. Jim and I win. Jim and I win. Yeah, yeah. good job, guys. All right, gang. Guess what? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? I'm going to kick this thing off because I'm going mellow corn. That's us. Oh. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. So there you go. Screw top. But I am going to do a last show pour. So this is it for that's this bottle. Serious? Is it going to fit? Oh, oh boy. Oh, that's no, no problem. No problem. Oh, that was a good one. That's not even. It doesn't even look last show pour. Yeah, it's not even a Danny pour or anything. Oh, it no, it is not. Well, it's tough to compete with Danny. I mean, Danny is the man. We do not endorse that. We, we do not endorse that. No, All right, like Ka- Kathy, you're next. What do you got? I've got Wilderness Trail. This okay. is a Randall's Barrel. Okay. It's a big, big cork, so we know that's not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah, those are good. Again, first pop, that's about it, though. So, uh, But that's the lead right now. So she's got the lead. McNew, you're next. What do you got? I have a very little left in this. Oh, that's the last show for new riff single barrel from Indiana Bourbon Club. Okay, that's our lead. Nice, basey. Uh, I would have saved that for bottle kills and last meals, but uh, okay, it's gone I'll, now. I, I'll, I'll pour a little and bring it back. <laughs> oh my! God, there's nothing left in there. No, yeah. I, I protest that show. If you're, if you're, if that's your bottle kills. What a <laughs> teaspoon. Oh, here, uh, they call it uh, teaspoons and teaspoons of lost That's a, she's yeah, reworking the show. Tim, what do you think? Uh, McNew's got the lead. I, I feel like she can be beat, but what do you got? Oh, we'll we'll see here because I've been nursing this uh, <laughs> bottle of Neely Family Distillery. I think he's going to uh, surprise be, us with something else, but no. I was going to surprise you with a screw top, but no, I'm going to come back at you hard and and and, and on fire with the Legend Barrel. Okay. Let's give this a shot. No, no, not enough. McNew's got the lead. Terrible. Jim, here's where we're at. You're between uh, McNew and Victory. What do you got? I've, I've got a brand new bottle of Knob Creek, uh, okay. 100 proof. So oh, hopefully, this one can win expectations. It. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, there it is. Oh, there it is. Boy, Heidi's no going to be pissed. Heidi's got her bottles. It's like, don't touch. Don't her touch till I go on the Bourbon Daily. Yeah, you know? Hey, once she gets out there, be like, what the hell? Jim. This was one of the bottles I sent you the picture of that she bought. Yeah, it yeah. Didn't open because they called her out yeah, on it. And then you you embarrass her so she doesn't use all of it, and then you go ahead and use it. <laughs> She's going to be furious with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, she won't get mad until I open her Yellowstone collection. That's true. <gasps> oh, you are so mad that's about it. Words. Lovely. Yeah. Well, Salud. Cheers, gang. Cheers. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, it's mailing it in for show 2004. We're going to have Kathy do some stats for you about 2000. I, you know, and we're doing the best we can. That's the bottom line. We'll do that in just a minute. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S. Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. 
He started appearing on her shows, and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. This is Caddy Cool. You're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. We are mailing it in for the <laughs> first Sunday in April. Also, show 2004. Like y'all it makes no fun. sense. At this point, we've jumped the shark. Sure, we're just mailing it in to mail it in. So yeah, yeah we're this show will be canceled pretty soon. So let's uh, let's enjoy what time we have left together, folks. And have let's Kathy. make it a good one. It's probably our last show. Let's do it. 2000 facts. Sorry, right, Kathy. What do you got? You you researched the year two thousand because that's where we're going to celebrate the I show. Did. 2000. But, yeah. I really wanted to, another group to, did that, so yeah. To bring, did they? Let's see. They did, they but they didn't share the facts. So you you said. you might you might do better than they did. So. Right. So obviously, the first day of two thousand, we realized Y two K was bullshit. A waste yeah. of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything was going to end. We're yeah, you know, we're all going to die. Basically, yeah, it was fine. Our bank Nothing happened. Dogs and all cats. Go to zero. Everyone was going to lose all their money. Nothing happened all, at all. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And, and of course, um, then they then they stand up and be like, well, "Yeah, but that's because we addressed it." Of course. Oh yes, you're the heroes now, IT geeks. Yes, we thank you. So, yeah. how did the preppers feel? Because I had a friend's mom who's like, "We have to get this bottled water. We have to get these canned goods." Because <laughs> <laughs> of like, Y2K. <laughs> Dr. Garage for Y2K. Then it didn't happen. And then, like, she just pretended like she didn't do those things. Oh, like, like Heidi. Like, you just so recently. I never did like that. Heidi. I never did that. She <laughs> pretended like she did not freak out. So come up with a re- new reason to prep. There's yeah. always some new reason to prep. Yeah. No, like, I'm just going to die. Like, I don't want to live. <laughs> no, I'm, walking, I'm walking into the zombie cloud. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna just die. I'm just gonna sacrifice me. And you got like Jim Baker, the Reverend, I, Reverend Jim Baker, and, and I'm, I'm selling buckets of food. Yeah, I'm so not, like, just to be ready for the apocalypse, he's got he sells buckets of food. You know, yeah, I am not, like I'm not interested in living in an inconvenient world. Like, just send me out. Now, if I'm gonna eat a bucket of food, it's gonna be uh, fried chicken. Yeah, well, that's all I'm, I'm gonna eat. I'm like, if I can't door dash some food, if I can't. Just right. When I want what I want it, I don't want to be here. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Maybe DoorDash doesn't live doesn't exist out where I live. I can't get anything. Um, okay. So this is the thing. I, I grew up in a rural area where we couldn't even get pizza delivered. And um I thought that was normal and it was for where we lived. But then I moved to the suburbs and I'm like, literally anything will come to my door and I never want to not live like that again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. McNew and I have done some events where we've you know stayed in the same mansion and stuff like that. And it's always fun to be with McNew because she orders a pizza every night, every single night. Awesome. I get yeah, she orders a pizza. Because oh. it's the perfect food, Steve. Yeah, it is the perfect food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you yeah. double up with the breadsticks? You order the pizza and then the breadsticks. Because yeah, <laughs> the breadsticks are great for breakfast the next morning. Yeah. So breadsticks are good. Yeah. Kind of thing, like where we get cheese like nacho cheese sauce to dip your breadsticks because other areas are like we'll give you marinara sauce and i think that's trash because i'm like where's the cheese sauce we're like we don't even offer that i'm like i don't want your fucking breadsticks (laughs) yeah i remember when my kid finally had some money and she was old enough to use the internet or the phone i don't know how she ordered it but you know she starts ordering from Domino's and orders just the lava cakes and and they have a minimum (laughs) they got a minimum you have to spend so she just orders all lava cakes she's like these are so good i'm like the Domino's lava cakes are that good yes we're ordering them just just deliver lava cakes yeah she's got them in the refrigerator you know that was like what is this (laughs) it's my lava cake collection i can't i can't get an uber out here i can't get you know yeah, a, so, these are all businesses you could start, Jim. Jim, come well, to the doing Trooper Tractor Uber because it's all farms out here. So yeah. that, that yeah. would John Deere pick me up and take me that's to town. A, that's where I grew up. Um, so I went to a pretty rural high school too. So the Pizza Hut in the biggest town would be like, we can come to the high school. So my mom would be like, you have to go meet him at the high school. 
Yeah, so they like my mom would be like, just pick it up in the parking lot before you leave school. <laughs> they would bring it. You would tell them what your car looked like. They'd bring it to your car in the high school parking lot. Really? But they would not come to our town because it was like a little rural town. Okay. And they, you got to give Pizza Hut some props though. With that stuffed crust pizza that they invented, oh, oh, found a new first. new place to put cheese. My I'll, I'll God. Oh, yeah. that stuffed crust pizza! It's oh. just like a, so I thought that was great when I was younger. Now, as an adult, we ordered it maybe like a year ago because they kind of like started promoting it again. I'm like, oh yeah, those were great when I was a kid. It's like a fucking mozzarella stick shoved in there. It's that's not- good, right? Yeah. Is that bad? <laughs> nah, DiGiorno's DiGiorno's stuffed crust pizza now. <laughs> That's what you want. I don't want to get mad no. at this. You're like five uh, that's not <laughs> delivered. She needs something delivered. Yeah, not delivery. It's DiGiorno. It's DiGiorno. Yeah. That's right. It's not back delivery. In the, uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s at Lake of the Ozarks, a big lake by where, uh, where Steve and Kathy live, they would deliver Domino's by boat. And oh. so they, they went every dock, they put a number on it, and you could order, they come in a big freaking scarab, and they deliver within a half hour. <laughs> Yeah, so, probably last last. It didn't last but two or three years, but it was great. You sit on your dock and order pizza. And that's pizza. a cool. That's a cool marketing concept because I feel like if I'm on a dock, I want to get drunk and want pizza. So I'm like, sure. At some I point, you're going to want pizza. Just I know it's going to be great pizza, but they will bring it to me. Yes, I'm. I will. I've always thought about getting like, getting like a big pontoon on one of those lakes, and in the morning, drive around and sell coffee and donuts dock to dock. That's a genius idea. In the, after, in the afternoon, go to like the party places and sell ice and beer because everybody's cooler, melts on ice, whatever else. Margaritas. Yeah. You got to put your bait on ice so it's perfect. Oh. Yeah. 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 So yeah, my mom. Places he's talking about, it, it's not bait. He's talking about Party Cove. Yeah. yeah party Cove. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. my mom's got to a point since my dad passed where she's like, what am I going to do in my old life? And I was like, mom, when I turn 55, I'm going to go to a Margaritaville. Because they're 55 plus. Up right. And I don't feel like 55 is old anymore. I feel like that used to be old. It's not. Thank you. I'm almost 55. Thank so thank you. you. That's not yes, old anymore. That's, that's I'm not on the cusp. Retirement. My next birthday is 55. Yeah, that's not retirement age anymore. But I'm like, those are 55 up communities. I'm like, when I get to the age where I'm like, fuck this house, fuck this yard. I'm going to go to a Margaritaville and just get lit every day at noon. Right. And my mom was like, is that how you want to live? I'm like, that's how I want to live now. Yeah. Of course, that's how I want to live when I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Are that's, you doing float trips, right? You guys do canoe trips or whatever, the rafting yeah, yeah, trips? Yeah, yeah, We call them cabrewing, but yeah, float trips, canoe trips, so, yeah. So I, I – and it finally broke down, but I used to have a Black & Decker battery pack blender. And we'd, <laughs> and, we'd, so and, we'd go, and we'd be going down the river – I, I had everything. I have every toy you ever want for the river because I've been on a hundred float trips, way yeah. more than a hundred float trips. And so, so people pull like, and I and I would just literally pull out the blender, be making margaritas on the side of the raft. That is what I want. Yeah, I, I like, want to live in a community with other drunk retired adults. Where sure. You, like, like noon, you can have a margarita for breakfast. Yes, I've looked at those places. They're, they're, uh, margarita bills are cool. Let's, yeah. let's just ride around in our golf carts with our open containers. That is what I want. And my mom was like, you're insane. That is not what she wants. And I'm like, yeah. well, then just stay in your goddamn house. Then. I'm a year away from being able to buy my Margaritaville house. I don't tell my wife this. Uh, you have to be 55. So I've told her you have to be, she's like a year and a half younger than me. So I was like, you can move down once you hit 50. So I, I'm trying to get a year and a half to myself. I'm trying to get a year and a half where it's just, I have some peace. It really, if as long as one is technically, you know, then you can move down with a, but I'm just, I've convinced her where you have to both. You, Isn't she that move wild though? Because now in my thirties, I'm like 55 is not old. I'm like, yeah, it's I, not. I feel, Look at me. I feel like retirement community should be like 67, 70. Right. It is wild to me that 55 year olds get to live this leisurely life. I don't feel like that's it's cool. They got a town square. They got, to, they got the, the, all those margaritas I mean, have a I know, bar. I know that's where I want to go. Everyone but drives I, golf carts and stuff go. in there. Yeah. It's all like a golf cart. It sounds fun actually. Yeah. yeah so that's where Steve, I want to be. That is where I'll be. You're not wrong about that time frame between when you retire and your, the warden retires. My father had that happen to him. So he ended up getting <laughs> laid off. Uh-huh. in august and so he's laid off in august of 2018 
And then he was planning on announcing his retirement in October, effective January 1st. Well, he gets laid off. He gets paid to st- for like a whole other year. And he's got yeah. like nine months before my, his, his, my mom retires. And I said, your retirement's over the day she retires. So you sure as hell better get it Love. out of your system. Love, then. damn it. Yes. <laughs> and you, so yes. He's hanging out with his friends. They're going to eat Chinese food and bad yeah. food they shouldn't be eating. This, this would be thing. a great year and a half for me. Yes. Oh, my God. That yeah. time, my mom was so jealous. Oh, yeah. She's this still is, to this day. They've been retired for five years. This now, is what least, I want to happen. Know? Yeah, don't tell her. Don't be the one no, who tells you her. No, you got to do it. You, oh, yeah. my God, you have to do it. That, I'll that, just live. He, he's yeah. never known freedom and then had to take it away <laughs> so swiftly. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. yep. It's genius. I, I'll... I'll have a year, and I, I, I'm i a February birthday. She's a June, so I've got a year plus between February and June, so almost a year Perfect. and a half of just by myself. Yeah, so I think this will be good. So, no. Kathy, what are some of your stats for the year 2000? Things we need to know. It was the year that the Concorde crashed in Paris, killing oh, 109, 109 people. Sad. Don't bring your party down, Kathy. Yeah. It's it's sad the Concorde went away. I mean, how cool yeah. is the Concorde? I mean, the ability right. to yes. To be over in Europe in uh, you know a couple hours, you know, yeah, three yeah. hours, five hours, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. Quick. Australia yeah. held the Summer Olympics in Sydney. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. I like Australia. Um, the cool. International Space Station was manned by a live crew. Okay. And of course, hanging chads. Hanging chads, yeah. Yes, I remember that. Very, very much remember that. Kathy, would you go to that International Space Station? Because And they don't send you there. You're not going there for like 10 days. you got to go there for you know a year or something like that. Would you do a year in the International Space Station? Uh, yeah. Would you? I, I'd have to get a few things down. You know, what's pooping like? You know, I, I don't understand how that works up in space and stuff like that. So it, it's all about the stories you get to tell at the end of your life. Don't throw a vacuum, Steve. It's all, <laughs> throw I'll, I'll a vacuum. You yeah, that sounds fun. Seriously, that sounds fun. Everything is about the stories you get to tell when it's all said and done, and that would be a good story. So right Do now, Russia, still spirits up there? In, in, I don't think in so. Three weeks, in three weeks, Russia is picking up their astronauts, and they're saying mm-hmm. they're going to leave the American astronaut behind. Yes. Oh. Yes. It just came on the news today, like, so the American will be all by his or herself. I don't even know who's up yeah, there. Yes. Yeah. Himself. Wow. Yeah. Himself. Oh, that's crazy. Man. <laughs> Imagine being there all by yourself. But, but, Elon, but Elon Musk said, I'll, I'll go up and get him. Yeah. Yeah. Elon Musk is going to go get him. So Perfect. Can, can regular <laughs> citizens choose to tag team? Do you like, I'm fucking over my family and my life. Can I tag team in to go hang out up there for a while? Like, is that allowed? Oh. Can we do that? No, you people would go do that. I mean, you think about it. They're, like, they're talking about, they're that. talking about. Taking people to Mars and you never get to come back and people are like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, so, so, sign oh, me I'm up. I'm not going to Mars, Mars, but I'll, I'll like, go to the people, people are willing to do the Mars thing, which is They're amazing. Like, right? These kids are real fucking annoying. Sign me up. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That must be why I'm not willing to go to Mars. No. Yeah. No kids. Yeah. No kids. It's, no. it's not like they say in Total Recall. I'll tell you that. <laughs> get your butt to Mars. <laughs> get your butt to Mars. <laughs> well, there's, yeah. there's no women with three boobs then. That's what you're no telling me. No women with three boobs. Yeah. Total yeah. Recall, the movie. Yeah. That was a good movie. Sharon movie Stone. One million times. Sharon Stone, in, uh, she was amazing. Uh, she had a run of movies that she was incredible, and that being one of them. Uh, but, you know, she she was in Casino, which she was great in. Yeah, she was, uh, obviously, Basic Instinct, uh, she made that whole movie, of course. What's and that? Casino is one of those, the ones that get like played on basic cable stations all the time. It's and, great. Like, TV watcher, but when I'm like, oh fuck, casinos on, I'm gonna sit down and waste yeah. my day. Right, that now. is a great <laughs> movie. Like, oh, and a half hours long. It's overlooked because of Goodfellas because they, they feel like it's yes. cool, but it's, it's it's great though. By its yes. casino is an awesome movie. Yeah. So, yeah, if you haven't watched Casino, like make a whole movie night. Fucking watch Casino. It is good. The way De Niro ends, always picking a winner, right, betting on the horses right. and handicapping mm-hmm. the horses with those big ass Coke bottle glasses. That's what I, that's my guy. That's right. what I want to end up being. And like, and like, you want to like hate Nikki, but you love Nikki. Like, there's so much. Oh, yeah. Power. It's such a good movie. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's great. What else? Okay. Uh, so, since we're talking about movies, I will move to the Oscars. Okay. Well, American Beauty won Best Picture. I've never seen it. Never seen it. Never seen it. 
I can give a crap at the Oscars. Yeah. And it was the year that Angelina Jolie won for Girl Interrupted and oh, kissed God. her brother. And, 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 and uh, how's her career been ever since? Uh, what's she done ever since? I don't even know. What I, it, she adopted a bunch of kids and yeah. married Brad Pitt. Married Brad Pitt. Oh. <laughs> she was Tomb Raider and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Smith. I like to I like to introduce Royce Neely to things that uh, before he was born, or at least before he was aware of things, because he's so much younger than me. I think he's Sling Blade involved. is the next next movie I need um, to have him watch, right? Sling Blade like, is an amazing movie. Um, he's not like a weird age difference from me, but like I feel like he grew up more sheltered. Where right. my parents are like, well, we're watching it, we watch it too. Like my he, he, he never saw any of this stuff. So I'm like, watch uh, um, watch Seinfeld. And you know, at first he fights and doesn't want to watch it, and then he gets into it, and then then you don't you can't even talk to him for a month because that's all he's doing is watching Seinfeld. Yeah. So, oh has my god. Seen, has he not seen Sling Blade? No, he's never seen Sling Blade. No. That's a, such a great he's movie. Gotta fucking watch it. He's got to. Some people call it a Kaiser blade. I call it a sling blade. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch Sling Blade. That's like a classic. <laughs> Toothpaste and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Sling Blade. You're going, you're going to a podcast about something now, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Castle Steve Mattis. Mattis. Don't. Uh, then yeah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I love Paul, by the way. Yeah, Paul's great. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Uh, Mc, uh, uh, or Kathy, what else do we know from the, uh, the year 2000? I'm going to tell you Billboard's top three songs from the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. See if we don't even Steve. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone want to guess anything first? The year uh, 2000? That bad touch by yeah. um, Tub Thumping. Lady Gaga. Tub Thumping. No. Oh, Lady Gaga. Chumba Wumba. Chumba Wumba. Yeah, Chumba Wumba. Yeah. Chumba Chumba Wumba. Wumba. <laughs> And no, I, there's got to be an instinct in there. Salt and pepper. <laughs> I like salt and pepper, actually. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. Oh, there bye. you go. You got and it. Number two. Backstreet you Boy. I want it that way. No. Britney Spears. Oops. I did it again. Oh, God. And she was in that cute little red plexi leather thing. That was a great video, too. Yeah. And the number one was Destiny's Child with Say My Name. That's still on my getting ready playlist. I know the bye 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 one. That's the only one I know out of those songs. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it, but I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be great with whiskey. That's for sure. No, no, no. No, I don't like pop. Pop music didn't win that bracket challenge. No, no. I think pop music in two thousand sucked because I think all three of those people were Mickey Mouse kids. Okay, so Kathy, how did, about, how did you feel about the Spice Girls, though? Like, late, late <clears throat> night Spice Girls. Um, are, are you asking me how I feel? So, did, did I'm not like a them? Spice Girl generation. I know, but yeah. did you like them as an adult? No. no. I still no. like them. <laughs> uh, Ginger Spice. <laughs> I like that one spice song they had. Tell free. me what I want. What I, I think that was good. That was good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ginger cool. Spice and Sporty Spice left lived rent free in my head for a while as a teenage boy. <laughs> so, like Spice Girls came out, I was maybe 10, 12 years old, obsessed with the Spice Girls, right? And they had like some spicy songs that now as an adult I go back and listen to and I'm like, oh shit, my mom let me listen to this. <laughs> yeah. So did Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper had yeah, some. Yeah, but oh, they were talking about did not get the TLC. Class. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, TLC. No. I love that. Waterfalls is really deep. Yes. Right? People think waterfalls. I'll listen to TLC any day, but I don't understand oh, yeah. the Spice Girls. Hmm. Little Warren G. Warren G. Regulators mount up. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's wonderful. Well, two thousand like, two live crew had to be uh, out there at that time. The two I live crew. So. I like two live crew. So. Yeah. I didn't look at, I just looked at, you know, I wanted movies, common events, and Billboard Top 100. So that's Two Live Crew is weird, and, and we've talked about this already. I, You can put on one of those songs. I can sing every one of their lyrics still to this day of uh, any of those songs. You know, welcome to the fuck shop. Uh, I, yeah, I, all, I, all that I, stuff. I, I, I worked work at a bar in Tampa at a time, and they came and played at our club. A oh, huge, I heard this story. Like, yeah, and uh, we they threatened to arrest all of us who worked there just for letting them play. Like they tell us ahead of time, like you guys could get arrested for you coming in tonight. Like what the fuck? Did you talk to those guys? What, what were they like? 
Because I were, didn't talk to them at all. I was a bartender. They so. were crazy. I mean, they just exploded. And of course, they had nothing but problems and lawsuits and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. Super Gore was, you know, creating all kinds of shit for them and whatever. Did, else, but. Do you think at the end of the day, like like today, if we go and talk to Luther Campbell, does he have money today, or is he, or is he just a regular guy? I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't know, know because it's, you don't, you don't hear their stuff. Like you hear a lot of other, you know, right. older stuff played. I don't really hear Two Live Crew played. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That would be interesting. I, I sometimes think about that stuff. I wish I could just like track down people who are past their time with, uh, in the spotlight and find out what they're doing now. But well, that would be, amazing, that, that'd be a dream gig. It's amazing to see how many people piss their money away. Right. Have, have done well. Like, like Vanilla Ice, you know, one hit wonder pretty much, but he made a shit ton of money and, and kept it. Like he, he invested yeah. in other stuff. He's like, got like a show on HGTV where he. Yeah, yeah he's got a home renovation show. Yeah. Yeah. Henry he, Van Winkle. Right. He, yeah. uh, he yeah. for a while, was like a champion jet ski racer and shit like that after his career. What like, the hell is a champion jet ski racer? Like, where where are these at? <laughs> what are, yeah. Where are they hanging out? fall into these things. What is this? Yeah. Talk to yeah. Lenny. Lenny, a, Lenny, a champion uh, squirt boat champion. He's a squirt boat champion, yeah. Lenny. Yeah, our own Lenny's a squirt boat champion. So, Wait, you know. a what boat champion? Let's put him head to head. Squirt with boat. Ice. What is a squirt boat? A squirt you boat is it's like jump. a very small kayak that actually uh, goes underwater and stuff like that. Uh, part yeah. of the move. So literally, yes. like you keep your legs in the boat, you go underwater with it, and it like pops you back up. It sounds. Yeah. It sounds like someone spitting a watermelon seed out of rivers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it sounds like you might drown, but you don't. So it's. No. Yeah. Well, we so don't know that they don't drown. Yeah. They well, I, I, apparently they there's a high risk of drowning, but uh, Lenny doesn't care. Oh, yeah. I sound, I'm very uninterested in the sport, but yeah. <laughs> I would I would watch somebody who want to participate. Did you ever meet Ashi from Total Wine? Sure. Yes. Ashi. I know Ashi. Yeah. He was the national champion of India. Inline skating, really? Two billion people. He was a national champion. <laughs> the national yeah. champion. Well, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I should, so, yeah. just for something from two thousand four, one one item. Okay. Mark Zuckerberg launched Facebook. From that, Harvard, so that was the Facebook Harvard college okay. dorm. Yeah, Harvard Which College. Is crazy to think it's only that long ago. Just two thousand four. Like, yeah. That was before I graduated high school. Actually, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I avoided it until 2013 when I started writing. So that's when I finally got on Facebook. That was it, though. I hated Facebook. I, no. I actually kind I of had nothing it. to do with it, but it was the only way I was going to make it to my 20th high school reunion. I um, mm. I remember when I was in high school, it just started. My boyfriend had actually graduated. He was in college. And at that time, you had to have a college email address to register for the the Facebook. It was the Facebook at that time. You would have the a email address to get on. And I was yeah. like, I was jealous. It was a it was the Facebook until Justin Timberlake told him to just be Facebook. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. That's what's in the movie. Yeah. The creator of Napster. Justin said, yeah. you drop, you drop the Napster guy. Yeah, Napster. Which, Jim and I have talked wow. about Napster, which was fantastic, by the way. Yeah. Oh, Napster's been spectacular. Oh, yeah. Napster and LimeWire downloading all those viruses. LimeWire? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's now well, archive.org. Archive.org has a ton of um, recorded live shows from thousands of artists. Really? You yep. can just download them for free then? You can download them for free. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Spectacular shows. Archive.org, search for music, and uh, all live shows that artists have approved, no problem for taping and things like that. Rare shows, you'd be surprised what you find. Very nice. Very nice. On that note. Is like a search? Can you search for who you want? Well, sure. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah, guess some of the artists been allowed been. them tape, allowed taping at the concert, and yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Kathy, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me downloading free stuff on Napster.com. No, <laughs> um, you can find me on Facebook at Kathy Cool. Tim. Uh, you can find me sitting here in awe with thank you, Kathy Cool, for prepping for the show uh, and making this yeah, actually something of, show. Of, thank of, you, of, of everything. You really nailed She's it. She's a show Kathy. MVP. Just, yeah. Yes, show MVP. And you can also find me on the Tasting Events page at abvnetwork.com or on Instagram at swyguy2112. 
All right, McNew. I am on Instagram at McNew ABB. All right, Jim. You can find me on Meta at Jim Fosnot or on Instagram <laughs> at Jim, F A Z Z J M. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that important website, abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Our show's out there. Previous, we got 3,000 of them for you to download. Check it out. Uh, we also got blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience, so please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. Finance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. See you, everybody. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.